is Nehanda Radio, giving you the best online entertainment and updated news and information from within Zimbabwe. Nehanda Radio, entertainment, news and information coming straight out of Zimbabwe. And I think uh, today's issue, I think we will we'll touch more on my role as a, as a think parliamentarian. First of all, I would like to respond to <coughs> the release by the Herald uh, in terms of the headline that uh, I was involved in a scandal. There's a scandal. First of all, I did not know that a business transaction where you are a shareholder constitutes to a scandal. It's the first I've heard that, that uh, a proper business t t transaction constitutes a scandal. Um, yes, I was involved in business before I was a member of parliament, and uh, it was out of my business aspirations that uh, I, I did enter into arrangements with Billy. Let me make it known that... I'm not a, a businessman who, who believes in, in things black and white. I am a businessman who believes in a handshake. For me, the handshake is key because the key to that handshake is that God is the witness of that handshake. I'm a b b believer in God. So I've always said what we agree and what a man says, he must honor. Whether you, you think sign the paper or not, if, if it's not an, on, an, an honorable man, he, it will still not fly. So it's quite important that uh, you also understand the way I go about uh, my business dealings. But it seems as if the, the thing Harold seems to have shifted this attention and probably uh, talking about Billy probably is probably a shift to, to try and get me to be quiet on some of the issues that I've brought up in, in, in Parliament and so forth. I'm very determined as a member of Parliament in my role on oversight to ensure that the country's resources are, at the end of the day, are, whoever is involved has got to account <coughs> to the country's resources because the Zim asset agenda, which the Herald has spoken about, cannot happen without us dealing with the issue of corruption at the end of the day. Billy Rottenberg was given a mining concession 30% uh, of Anglo-American in Unki. It was under the name Todo. He was to mine it. He never mined it. He speculated on it. That is also a question that I'll bring before the, the, the Minister of Mines in terms of what government policy is there <coughs> in people who speculate on concessions. So the money was never remitted in the country. We don't know what thing happened to the money. So the Herald can probably assist in also asking Billy Rottenberg that the total concession given to him for free by the Zimbabwe government, what happened to it? As far as I know, it's under another company. He's no longer a shareholder. It's under foreign companies. That is tantamount to think fraud. And I'm hoping that the, 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 the law enforcement agents will also move in trying to ensure that we deal with co corruption. The reason why I zero in on this, Zim asset cannot happen if our resources are not accounted for at the end of the day. Who is Billy Rottenberg? It seems we have all forgotten who Billy Rottenberg is. He fled uh, South Africa, uh, then, uh, then investigating the directed for serious economic offenses, launched a raid on Wheels of Africa in 1999. He was sought in connection with fraud relating to manipulation of import tariffs and the siphoning of company cash to himself and other fictitious invoices. He, is, he established a mafia operation with John Brindekamp and used our soldiers, our Zimbabwean soldiers in the DRC, who never got anything in return. He was stopped from entering the DRC and was in, implicated in the death of the Hyundai owner. In 2000, the DRC withdrew Rottenberg's mining concessions, reportedly after he failed to pay over the state's shares of the profit. In, in trouble with the authorities, he was deported in 2007. He's not welcome to any of these three countries, DRC, South Africa, and Botswana, and now uses Zimbabwe, and is believed to be untouchable. He was PI in DRC and asked help from this government 
He has never used any of resources to generate any business. Let us ask, how much money has he put into Zimbabwe? It's about time that the, the journalists did the question. The amount of money that Billy Rottenberg has invested in Zimbabwe. We all are, are, are keen to see the, com the country uh, taking off. We are keen to see investors bringing in their money, not investors who use the, company, the country's resources on, on, on things, speculation, then sell, then go and set up a plant in Chisumbaje. <coughs> Can you account for the transaction? Can you see the thing paper trail of where the money came from offshore? So I think it's also important that uh, the very same paper also does move into understanding how Billy, how much money has Billy invested in Zimbabwe? Or it is a question of the Zimbabwe resources that he speculates on and uses that money to then say he has money. That's something that we need to understand at the end of the day. Billy owns a company called Subbot. He's no longer in control of it anymore. The thing tracking company is in the hands of the, for the, the, the thing foreigners as well. He grew up on a farm in Karoi where he beat up blacks and he was known for having done that. His name Naro emanates from the fact that Ane Naro and Ane Ngachi Huisana Nwano Temane Buta Ane Naro. His car is number plate Naro. So you must understand Naro for what? So we, we, we will not be swayed in, in, a, in a thing white man. We have out asked the ministers who are black to account. What about a white man? And suddenly the, the thing state-owned media takes a position on a white person. Quite shocking indeed. How does the Zim asset grow? So I thought it would be pretty clear. He, of late he owns Zin, Zin was 7 million US. So how is the economy going to take off? He's still making cash every day from the mandatory fuel, but he cannot pay the government. How much money has he put into the fiscus with all the resources he has been given? That is the question we must ask. How much is he contributing to the fiscus of this country? He's got Nwanezi uh, Ranch, which is there, he's got 2,000 square uh, kilometers in Chiwari. He's got uh, Ch -ch -ch over 30,000 hectares. As far as I'm concerned, he is the single largest landowner in this country, and he's white. I thought our position was to take land from the whites and give it to the blacks. So where have we shifted in terms of policy as a government? That's our role as, as thing oversight. In terms of the transactions which were there, it was made they were done above board. At no point did I go to him. He was introduced to me. He was introduced to me. He looked for me and he saw the energy in me. He saw the proactivity in me and he decided to hire me as a consultant. I never went to him. He brought his entire management to my offices, Eastgate so that I could meet them and, and, and introduce me as a consultant at the end of the day. Why then would he claim that I extorted him when he used his own helicopter to think land on my farm? Would you really land on, on, on a person who's, a, who's an extortionist with your, with, your, with your helicopter? All the way from Arara, you then land on my farm. So it, it's, it's very clear for us to also understand some of the transactions which are there. Yes, uh, it's no more business uh, pr 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 um, practice to, 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 to demand a share of the cake if you're involved. There is nothing amiss about that. There's, it has never been amiss. And since uh, 2011, September, when we then withdrew, we, we withdrew the transactions on the basis that uh, the Minister of Presidential Affairs and State Security now, uh, Honorable Mutasa, came to me and said Billy had approached him for us to settle this out of court. The onus is for you to go and ask the Honorable Minister, did Billy uh, ask him uh, to, 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 to settle this out of court? Because he's an Honorable Member of Parliament and he so happens to be my uncle, I trusted that. Would you not tr tr uh, trust your uncle? I, I then tr tr trusted my uncle. I decided that the matter must be settled out of court because he had gone and asked him to do that. Bezo Nyabadza was there. I am the one who took Billy to Adda. Bezo Nyabadza never knew Billy. 
Why was I in a flight from Harare to, to think Ada? Certainly I was not a flight attendant end it on that flight. I mean, it is a helicopter. A helicopter doesn't need a flight attendant. So what was I doing? You can go and check the, the records at the airport. Who left on that flight? So it would be good for him to answer. What was I doing on that flight? Yes, as a, as a, as a, as a director, I had, I had allowances that were given to me. And, and, and yes, I don't come cheap. Sorry, I don't come cheap. I'm not one of those who's satisfied about being given an envelope, a brown envelope, and I go. I want a stake in the business, especially if it is, it is a thing lucrative business. I approached the government, and Honorable uh, uh, Savan was the chairman of Wange. We wanted to do business with Wange. What is wrong with approaching a chairman of a, of a company? It was then left to the CEO, Fred Moy, to deal with it. Again, that transaction did not come out the way it was supposed to come out. He had promised the government, and look into the agreement of that tra 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 transaction. The Herald must get a copy from him. Now, now that they have a very good relationship with him, can they tell the country what that transaction was about? I'll tell you what it was about. He went to the government and pledged and promised the government that he would increase power generation. He would increase power generation by supplying coke and coal to the thermal power station. At that point in time, there was never any power generation improvement in the country. As a result, he exported coke and coal out of the country. So we need now the figures from the Herald. How much of the coke and coal he was mining went to the thermal power station? And how much of it was exported? Let's deal with thing facts. So here's for, for something for the Herald to also look into. Now that they have information, they can ask the, the Minister of Mines for that agreement. He never honoured that. Secondly, there was the aspect of Chisumba and Jewe Bezo is involved. And unfortunately, Bezo has become an, an Uncle Tom. On the Sabe Coco Conservancy, he was busy fronting whites. Where there are whites involved, he's there. He has no spine. He resigned as a, prof as a, as a pro provincial chairman of ZANU PF to pursue the interests of whites in this country. Because ZANU PF would certainly compromise his sort of uh, Uncle Tom, a nice guy amongst the thin whites. Sabe Conservancy was in the forefront. Read. You are, you are I think, journalists. Why don't you look into it? He was in the forefront of defending whites again. Today he's in the forefront of defending whites again. We are beyond a, a situation where we think whites must be superior to think blacks. It's, it's, it's against the government policy. It's against what we are advocating for at the end of the day. It's about compliance. I'm a member of parliament, and it so happens that I know more about that transaction. So knowledge is power. So why don't I use this knowledge to get the country moving forward? I'm not the one who talked about the, the compliance 5149. And when I ask in Parliament, I'm asking in my role as a member of Parliament where there is oversight. And yes, you need parla pa 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 parliamentarians who research, who have knowledge, so that they have facts. So what is wrong with that? I separate issues. So let us separate issues. In the aspect of co 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 compliance, he must comply. Because that's what the government requires him to do. Government needs money. There was four million uh, litres which, uh, which went missing the other day in Chisumbanje. Why didn't the Herald talk, talk, talk about that? It, it, was, it, it was taken out of this country. It was exported to another country. Then we had a problem. There was a bit of a, of a panic. No wonder why government then switched over to get ethanol from Think from, 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 from Triangle. Did, did you not understand that? Why suddenly do they give a company mandatory uh, 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 monopoly? But yet they now go to another company that produces ethanol to then supply ethanol. It's because the country was going to be brought to a thing halt because four million was exported. So you cannot have uh, such, a uh, such a strategic co 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 commodity controlled by an individual because you can easily wake up one day and say, I'm not going to give you fuel. So this is why we're pushing for government to be involved. And unfortunately, it's taking longer than, uh, than, than expected. And Billy claims to, to, to own the entire government at the end of the day. No wonder why the ministers are deal darling at the end of the day. But we will continuously ask them.
because it is important that the, the thing fiscus it, 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 it does get money so that Zim asset does take off at the end of the day. Yes, uh, it was share it was shareholding the, the one get transaction was about board. It was based on commission on the tonnage that he would mine. On the tonnage that he would mine. And I would get a commission at the end of the day. On Unki, I refused for a commission. I then said I needed a shareholding. I was a 10% share, share, shareholder. And all these transactions happened in front of people, people of re 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 repute. And when I'm sitting with, with, with national leaders and we agree, I consider the deal signed and sealed. But yes, we have a problem again with politicians who are hungry, who then, who, who then circumvent you so that they can go through. It's also normal business practice. Whether it's normal business practice, I don't know. But in Zimbabwe, we would call it normal business practice. Where you take somebody to, to a leader, but the next thing that leader is circumventing you is dealing with that. So there was an exchange of many brown envelopes. And the time will come when we shall name who received the envelope and who did not. This was my sweat. I worked for it. And I, I told him that, yes, you might not pay me, but none of your business will think prosper. Because my spirit and the God I pray will not allow you to prosper. And that's all I say to him. Thereafter, I've never spoken to him. And you can see the thing problems in his enterprises today. Because he's not a genuine businessman. He's not honest. He is a crook. He is a crook. And his excellence is, is on record in saying that, can we vet every businessman that comes into the country? We seem to think, take crooks to think him, who destroy the economy and the people at the end of the day. So I think we must be able to think separate issues by all means in whatever is happening. ENRC has taken over a comic at the end of the day. It was, uh, it was, it has taken over Kamik, they've taken Todo. I can give you information, you can Google it, it's there, so that you're able to also, you know, deal from an informed position, so that it, it more or less helps us moving forward. ENRC acquisition of Central African Mining Exploration in December 2009. In, NRC acquired 95.40% of the shares of the Central African Mining Corporation. And that included Zimbabwe. And Billy, what is his percentage at the end of the day in that? So I think this information is up for you to, to think, look at it, and try and investigate and so forth. I'm aware of the, uh, the shift. I'm aware of the position I've taken as a thing legislator at the end of the day. I was elected by the people to stand for the people. I'll never shy away from, t from telling the truth. That is the reason why when I call for ministers to account equally, I must also respond. That's why I mean to also respond. I have got to be consistent. I cannot call for ministers to account when I'm not also able to also account. So I've come to you as honest as I am to also meet you to also account. So I equally hope that uh, those who are also said to be involved will also call for a press conference and also account for a thing wealth, <laughs> which is something that we must not miss our words about and we must co 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 continue. Benzo Nyabadza has benefited with the Mutare, a house in Mutare. Can you call him where he got that thing house from? His companies are not doing well. Billy Rottenberg bought a house for him. No wonder why he's become a spokesperson for Billy. No wonder why when you talk about green fuel, he's based on Yabaza. You must tell him that the true shareholder in this business says that Billy bought you a house when you requested Temba Melissa to talk to Billy about that. And the house has been bought in Mutari. Can you show the world where you got the money from? So let's not have Uncle Tom's talking what they, uh, you know, I come before you because I have no skeletons in my wardrobe. If I don't come here, then there would be so much speculation. I'm subject to being investigated, to being asked and so forth. Issues of extortion, listen, he has a right to go and report to the, to the, the central police station. That I did extort to him. And investigations must thing happen. I'm not new to thing investigations. I'm sure you're all aware of that. So why then talk about it in the press? If it's of and, in, in, national interest, report the matter to the police station and let the law take its course. Equally, I'm also saying what happened to the total concession that was given to you for you to think mine. 
If you, so if you did, uh, he must answer. If he did not answer, then I also go to the police station and also put a report that there was a total concession given to Billy Rottenberg and he speculated on it and it was fraud. And the money never came into, into the country. Where did it go? We must know. There must be an inv investigation into the Chusimbaje plant. One minute is 600 million. The next minute is 400 million. The entire Zim plant, Rolls Royce equipment, never cost them. That, that much. Ladies and gentlemen, can you honestly compare Chisumbanje to Zimplat? <laughs> Come on. Who are they trying to bluff? The days of bluffing honorable members of parliament who had no information are long gone. We have the mandate to save this nation. We have the mandate to take this nation out of the hole that it's in. And doing so requires us to be pretty clear. Finally, I'll challenge the thing, the thing Herald. I'm not one who likes to sue. If I wanted to sue new newspapers, I'm sure I would be thinking rich by now. But I will also give guidance to the Herald. The Herald must prove that uh, the, the letter shows that Melissa drew after he approached Mr. Rottenberg seeking urgent financial help to cover another deal. But assistant was premised on the uh, session of all demands on Billy Rottenberg. The Herald must prove the cash I was giving. Equally, they've also produced information of the letters. So where is the cash that I was, I was saying? I think the journalists must report responsibly with facts. And that small envelope that you're giving is not worth it at the end of the day. The, 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 the corruption in the media is also getting out of hand. And this article is nothing but a few people who have been paid. How can you call a scandal? Ah, uh, yes, these are big deals. <laughs> no wonder why it's 165 million. It is the value of the transaction. And I'm not one who is used. So I, I wonder, how can it be a scandal? I told you the, 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 the role that Mtasa played. In us wanting to go to Chisumbanje, he is a leader in Manikaland, it's no secret. I had applied for this, I, I didn't have the money. I then incorporated Billy. Billy was interested in Ada Sisi. And I told him, Ada Sisi is too, is too, too small. Why don't you go to Chisumbanje? So the, the, the relationship with Mtasa is him being a senior government leader and the leader of Manikal and to say, we are coming to, to, to invest. Savanu was him being a board chairperson of Wange. Nyabadza was the board chairperson of ADA. So when you are dealing with the ADA transaction and you have access to the board chairman, you go and tell him so that he understands your vision. There is, there is nothing sinister about that at all. And since 2009, I have not uh, demanded any money from him at all. And, uh, and uh, for him to say extortion, we never met to then deal with this matter out of court. But I've said, listen, it's now in the hands of the thing, Lord. But what I know that his businesses will not pro 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 prosper because he's not honest. Gentlemen and ladies, let us understand who Billy Rottenberg is. And let, let's not be excited by the small brown envelopes that we think get to just pay your thing rent in a month and get you fuel to get home. I think if we are to really help the, this country, let's deal with serious issues. Let the headline read, Rottenberg fails to, to justify why he felt, uh, why he could not mine. Because that's a country resource worth billions. That concession, 30% of, uh, of Anglo-American, is said to be worth $4 billion. That is the issue that we must talk about. So I think I'd like to, to think, guide uh, Takunda Maud, that, listen, I, I think it's, it's important that we deal with facts and we deal with issues that... You know, Billy has also got into parliament. He's all already co co corrupted some members of parliament. You were there when that whole committee was held in indigenization. There were members of parliament paid to huckle the chairman, even asking the chairman to stand up. Can't you see that? But some of us are not moved by that. 
There were, there were no noise because members of parliament had been paid to say what they needed to say. There are members of parliament who are in Billy's constituency who have approached me that can we mediate between you and Billy. I've said no. Can he give you a million dollars? I said no. A million dollars is not 165 million. But it's either he gives it to me or he doesn't buy. By now, in, in business, at the end of the day, when money is not coming through, you write it off. I wrote it off. I wrote it off. If it came to me today, I would probably donate it to some, to, 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 to some charitable organization. <laughs> <laughs> because I've realized the money is also dirty and I don't want to be associated with dirty money so I wrote that off and uh, I have no interest in it but I suppose he is guilty at the end of the day you know when you don't do good to somebody you feel the thing pressure so I think if he's guilty he must really say he's guilty so I, I really don't have time for, for, I think, Billy, with his reputation that he has, I think uh, uh, time will certainly catch up. I think you can uh, bribe a few people, but you cannot bribe the, the whole country. You cannot bribe the thing, whole country. You can just bribe a few, but you cannot bribe the whole country. You can lie to a few, but you cannot lie to the whole country. And I think time is catching up with him now. I thank you. Can I get questions from the... Yeah, um, my name is Colin Maslow. Uh, just two things. You, you say you want facts and you also make a, you made a serious accusation on us, the journalists, that there was a brown envelope. I think it will be fair in future that you present such facts instead of just attacking us that for that story to come out there was, um, there, there was, there was corruption. Okay, I'll respond no, to you. Can just in a second okay. And also... I, I don't know, all, all of a sudden, Billy Rottenberg is bad because he's white, and yet you and he was your business partner. I don't know, can you just try to do for that? Have you never um, um, married a wife, then you did discover she's, she's unfaithful? A, a wife married a husband and discovers that he's, he's unfaithful. That is life. The key is to also say they're unfaithful. <laughs> 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 so on the on the on the on the aspect of quid, it's called quid quo pro. I have challenged the Herald to 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 produce a statement me receiving money, failure to which I then say the journalist was being bribed, because you cannot talk about money without producing that. So it's quid quo pro. And I challenge them. That's why I said so. Failure to which the journalist had other m m motives other than building. You cannot write this rubbish, which, I mean, this is rubbish. Anybody reading it will think, but money exchanges hands. Even in the media, it does. It's not only the politicians who are corrupt. The media equally is. And these are traits of a, a, a corrupt journalist. I, ch I challenge the journalist to also do the same tomorrow and show the, the country that Melissa was paid so much and that's why he withdrew because it was a desperate situation. That's fair. You wrote it, show the evidence. You can't write and have no evidence. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I feel sorry for journalists. If I had to take this legally, this guy would never survive in his whole life. But I've always said I feel sorry for you because you would not even afford a thing lawyer. So why would I? You are, you are, you are my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe as a, a follow-up to this question, at what point did it occur to you that uh, Billy was, was uh, corrupt? Or, yeah, That's a good question. Was he only starting to speak about it now in response to that? Actually? No. No, no, you are wrong. Read the Financial Gazette. This is not you. That's what I'm saying. There are corrupt tendencies. Go and get the, the, the thing for the Financial Gazette. And I'll give you the when it was written. I spoke about this in the Financial Gazette. There is absolutely nothing new here. At what point did you discover? When I discovered when he had sold the, the, the Unkiko concession. And that's when I went to him and I opted out. I had the choice to either be in the, to remain in the shareholding, 
but I then opted out. But I said, how can you remain in the shareholding when the shares have been bought? So the money that you got, can you give me my money? Is there anything wrong with that? And that's when I, d I, d I, d I, d I discovered that he was not honest. And what I've done is to alert the country and the people that you're dealing with the white criminal. He's a crook. And it is my responsibility as a citizen who loves this country as a legislator to say, be careful of this man. Look at his track record. There are no sour grapes in this. I've not, I've, 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 I've lived on with my life. But equally, I'm also, I also want to also warn my, my, my people against such a man. Why are you not reporting this fraud to the police? It's clear he's, 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 he's a group, he's a criminal. If you at any point try to alert the police. No, what I'm doing on Wednesday, I'm asking the thing Minister of Affairs, the, 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 the Minister of, of, of Mines. He's a very honest Minister of Mines, I must say, and I'm sure you'll get to the bottom of it when he dissolved the ZMTC boards, which people thought were untouchable. But uh, I have I, I actually have faith in the Minister of Mines that if I, if I bring it up on Wednesday question time, he will, he will take action. Okay. Um, I just wanted to find your position, where you stand as, a, as an OPF official as well, as well as an MP. Uh, with regards to the respect of um, the media, the so-called um, uh, exiled media, SW Radio Africa, Studio 7, Radio of the People, and so forth. Because these issues you're talking about uh, against BD, they've been reported by the so-called pilot radios since 2003. And uh, as Zanupi, uh, we understand that uh, you went all out actually to attack those pirate radio stations, the so-called pirate radio stations. Why did you not stand up against the, your colleagues in ZANU-PF and said, no, this is the media which is reporting factually and the, the only to come now? I've never had problems with the media. In fact, the, the, the Herald has become worse than Nene and Radio. I think actually... See, I think as long as the media reports honestly and from a credibility point of view, it will gain the, the thing respect it deserves. And it takes time. But stay in the game. You must keep playing. And with time, no wonder why we called for a thing press conference. No wonder why I was not comfortable with giving an, 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 an exclusive interview to the Herald. Why is it that I called for a press conference? I could have equally written and said the response. But it's now up to those who write the truth. You know, and your 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 thing papers. No wonder why people today are buying three, four papers. Long back it would just be the herald. But then why? So you are saying the herald is not saying the truth. And uh, that's what the perception was with other media players that uh, the Herald could be lying in some ways, maybe covering up for some ministers and uh, uh, government officials. But uh, as an official, my question is, why were you not coming out in the open and attacking the can I Can I be honest with you? Zanu PF, there's no secret that there are factions in the party. And I'm sure the, 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 the Minister of Information belongs to a certain faction. So you also attack another faction. And I say this bro boldly without even anything. If you also trace his thing, his thing record, he's also been implicated in factions before. It's not a secret. So that is very clear, and I will not mince my thing words on that. But don't uh, don't use the state media to attack people appointed by the president at the end of the day. It is not good. It must stop at some point. Yesterday it was Mtasa. Now it's Mliswa. Next thing it to be His Excellency. I belong to the leadership that came out of the last uh, Congress held. <laughs> and I look forward to working with the leadership that will also come out of the Congress that we are going to have. <laughs> okay, I need some 
clarity, you said the 165 million was the net value of the transaction. Maybe I'm missing the point. Does it mean you were supposed to be given 165 million out of the facilitation or? It's not, le let's not use the word facilitation. Mm -hmm. It is shareholding. <laughs> I did not go for facilitation. My, 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 my letters, legal letters, talk about shareholding. But I opted out of the business. In opting out of the business, what is the value of the company? Chisumba and Jay said it was 600 million. So what is 10% of 600 million? So that's how I, I reached those figures. Yes. Hey, maybe out of interest, are you at liberty to disclose some other ministers whom you take to in order to have those deals authorized and did they only provide the services government officials or they also they were also charged the consultation fee? No, you've got to understand when I operate as a businessman, I expect three things from my transaction when I was a businessman. First of all, I, there is the aspect of an of an allowance I get. There's shareholding and there's a success fee. So I've not even touched the thing success fee. This is this is nothing compared to the success fee. <laughs> so there is the success fee on the the project at the end of the day. So those are the three stages which any uh, businessman would think pursue. The allowance is for you running around petrol, phone calls, and so forth. And yes, to to begin with, he used to also pay, pay me. Well. But I remember meeting, meeting a certain Indian who said to me, are you dealing with Billy? I said, yes. He says, when you're dealing with Billy, you must do one thing. Show him the door, but don't open the door for him until he pays. Just show him the door, but don't open the door for him until he pays. And I remember that Indian vividly. So basically... Like I say, I've never known of a scandal where one is entitled to what they deserve and when you call for it. And like I've told you, I've written it off. February 2011, we were supposed to meet to sit down. He didn't come. He sent, uh, he, he had asked uh, Minister Mtasa and he told me, can you withdraw and can you also write a letter? And uh, I said, I've written a letter. He says, no, can you also write a letter which clearly uh, shows and I said to the lawyer, okay, draft the letter, and I'll sign the letter, because it was in very good, good faith. But it then never happened, and I don't see it happening anyway. So uh, I'm surprised that, uh, you know, it's still being discussed and so forth. And I also, I said to you earlier, on, let us separate the issues, the issue of him co 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 complying and the issue of, of the, 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 the business transaction. If we're able to separate those two, then this article will not be, have been out. He must co co comply, and I'm hoping that in Parliament on Wednesday, uh, the question will also be asked, when is he going to think co co comply Yes? Um, your company saw a flex was um, a debt written off by, by, by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe amounting to 4.7 million. Would you want to tell us what happened? How did, how did it come to be written off? First of all, we never got... 12 point something million dollars, I wouldn't be um, sitting here with you. <laughs> and I would like somebody to prove to me that the reserve bank gave us 12.5 million. How much did you get? We were supposed to get the equivalent of that in Zim dollars when the inflation was up and it was used to buy tobacco. So it would, it would be managed from that point that here is a facility for you to buy tobacco and then we'd be able to pay the money back in Zim dollars. But we also had a clause in the agreement that we also can pay the money in Zim, in Zim dollars. And we are sticking to paying it in Zim. You want to pay it in Zim dollars? And that is what is there. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you get in all? You didn't get the 12.5 million. No, we How didn't. How much did you get? How much did you get? Inflation, at that point in time, I think, uh, it was Zim dollars. 
probably equivalent to 5 million, 5.8. 5 million, 5.8. Yes. But you then export the tobacco. Failure to, to extort, export the tobacco, you pay back in Zim. So you fail to export the tobacco? Yes, so we we'll pay back in Zim. <laughs> if you want me to give you, to finish you with a copy of the agreement, I will. I have a copy of the agreement. Yes, there is a clause which does <laughs> say that. So I am exercising that uh, clause in the, in the agreement. So how, how was it written off? How did you get it written off by the government? It was never written off. I think I, I, I've just told you. <laughs> <laughs> it was never written off. As a company, we still owe money uh, to, to uh, uh, CBZ, who did borrow, borrow us money. As a company, we also owed money by farmers, which is more than what we owe. So you're paying some dollar in the interest? It's the CBZ will pay in US because we took the money in US. But Reserve Bank, there is a clause. If CBZ also had a clause for us to pay in US in Zim dollars, we would, would think also to stick to that clause. How much do you pay? How much do you owe CBZ? Oh. Uh, off, 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 off the top of my head, I would not. I would not pay. But we owe money to, to, to think CBZ. Yes. But, but uh, Mr. Melissa, taking from what you're saying now, it appears that uh, the way you're. Uh, Referring to these transactions, owing in Zim dollar and wanting to pay in Zim dollars and so forth, you seem to believe that you are also untouchable and you believe that uh, these people are untouchable and financiers are unfair and they have to, uh, to be accountable. How, how do you balance the two? But I then answered you, how can I be untouchable when we have an agreement with Arab Gazette? Why, why, why don't I finish with, with the agreement? Because it's, it's unfair to say to you, and when I'm responding to you, even on matters on my company, where I'm saying to you, there is a clause. You sign an agreement. Failure to export on time. You pay back in Zim dollars. So how does that make me and then think touchable? I'm not the one who controls the, the thing currency in the, the, this country. And the, 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 thing, the thing is, Zim dollar will come back, I don't know when. So I don't know, my brother, where you'd say I'm quite untouchable when I'm responding to you as it is. Yes. Maybe one more person. Tell me, were your deals with Billy, was there any paperwork on your deals with Billy? Was it considered the amounts involved? Certainly this cannot be a paper agreement. Were there any paperwork? Any paper Listen, I think I told you when I started that most of the transactions I get involved in, I'm a man who believes in God, who believes in his word. And uh, Billy, we were very clear. I am a politician at the end of the day. I'm on the sanctions lift. And we agreed that there would be no mention of me anyway because of that. Yes, it, it sounds, but then I would then prove to you that I also used to think draw down as a director in those, uh, that company. So is there evidence that I used to think draw down? And is there evidence that 30 ton trucks used to go to my farm and leave tires? Yes. So it was a labor agreement. It was. Um, you, you, you mentioned the Minister of uh, Information is, is using the state media to, to attack you. Why you? No, I did not say, I did not say, can I, can I be honest with you? I'm no longer a member of the Honourable Member of Parliament. I'm a provincial chairman, and there's an upcoming Congress. And probably I don't tow lines of thing, factions, and I don't tow a line of a faction. I don't know of any faction. I know of a leadership that is elected a Congress that I work with. So in the thick of things, yes, it's no, it's no secret that the, the, uh, the, 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 the Minister of Information was once said to belong to the Mnangagwa faction. It's not a secret. He was involved in that church, 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 church issue. If you want, you can actually go and re, 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 re research on it. Why do you want to use me to tell you when you know it? <coughs> <laughs> Write the things you know which are there already.
War came to not be used for abuse, if you like, of the military media. Yes, uh, it was. He was working with uh, Mr. Mnanga. Mr. Mnanga was working with Billy and uh, John Brinden at the at the time. If you kind of Google, if you kind of Google that, the, all the information is there. I mean, I'm surprised that no one ever did to write about what Billy. Are you telling me that he's also <laughs> passed the brown envelope in all the media houses? Eh? Surely one should be able to, to report correctly about Billy, who he is. No, but I think, as I said before, that uh, there are certain media uh, houses which have reported and they've actually been said to the enemies of the state. That's why I was asking that uh, these media houses, they have reported, and where were you by that time? so that you would actually support the media because you knew that uh, this person was a thief. First of all, I was not a member of the parliament. If you had to ask me now, I've given you my support. I had no authority whatsoever, but being a legislator, we are open to the media reporting the truth and so forth. And any media does, that doesn't report the truth, whether it's state media, we, 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 we will say it does, it's not reporting the, the thing truth. So you have literally dragged almost everyone into this and that scandal. Don't you think that you are rather, rather you're doing too much and not fearful for your life? No, I've never feared for my thing life. I think uh, I'm sure I'm the thing last person to fear for my life. Do you know my mini phone calls I got for me not to think I'd trace you? But what is so... So what is it to think hide? If, we're talk, if I'm in a legislator and I talk about us driving the anti-corruption drive, I must be in the forefront of practicing that too. I, can, I cannot be in parliament and say, guys, can you account? Then I'm not able to account. It's a bit inconsistent. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. I thank you. This is Nehanda Radio, giving you the best online entertainment and updated news and information from within Zimbabwe. Nehanda Radio, entertainment, news and information coming straight out of Zimbabwe.